Hello everyone, it's Mike. All right, so in this video, I wanna to talk to you about the four reactions to borderline personality disorder as I've experienced it on this channel. For those of you who are new to the channel, this is dedicated to non-borderlines to help them recover after having been in a toxic relationship with an untreated borderline. I am not a therapist or a psychologist Anything that I say here is simply my opinion and my experience. And any actions that you take based on what I say is your responsibility. All right, uh, I am not a borderline, uh, so I don't know what it's like to be a borderline. I am somebody who has recovered from being in a toxic state of codependence from having been with a borderline. And I'll share with you briefly how I uh, got into a state of recovery. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So this is talking about the four reactions to borderline personality disorder as I have experienced it here on this channel. So it's been very interesting. If you go back to the earliest videos in this, uh, uh, on this channel, you will see me as I am literally coming out of, for the first time in my life, a romantic relationship with somebody who had a severe case of borderline personality disorder and was untreated and undiagnosed. It was easily the most toxic condensed experience of my life. And uh, so I talk, I was talking about trying to figure out what was going on with this person so that I could get my sanity back and get my sense of self back and my self esteem. So I made uh, some conclusions based, you know, in where I was at, which I needed to make, um, which helped me to separate. So I had some more extreme views about what borderlines were doing, and I think I made uh, some judgments to the extent that I was kind of saying that they were uh, vulnerable narcissists or that they were sociopaths. And that is because, again, I was in a, in a huge amount of pain and I needed to see my borderline ex as somebody who did not have any empathy for me. I needed to see that because if I thought that she did have any empathy for the pain that she had caused me, that would kickstart my caretaking and then I would want to get back together with her and that would you know, keep me in the loop. Or, you know, if we didn't get back together, it would keep me in the pain of the longing and the, it would keep me in my codependence. Um, I've since modified some of my viewpoints on that, but I think it is important for the codependent to understand at least one thing, which is that they must come to the conclusion that the borderline has a mental illness that prevents them from uh, having a successful um, intimate connection with somebody. And that, in fact, it is the actual success of creating an intimate emotional connection with them that actually stimulates them to do the very sociopathic, uh, very narcissistic, harmful, uh, destructive things. So, to start out with that, if it helps to see them as narcissists, to see them as sociopaths, in the beginning, that if that helps you to separate so that you can see that there's no hope whatsoever of you achieving what it is you think you want from them, and to start re, you know, going no contact and getting your life back together, then that is a good place to start. But eventually, if you need to heal, you have to evolve and come to understand that uh, there is a difference between the narcissist and the borderline and that it is important to understand that they may not understand what they're doing and the effects of what they're doing. So I'm going to share with you my the four responses to borderline personality disorder that I've experienced on this channel. It's been very educational and extremely interesting for me. So the first one is kind of an obvious one, which is, this is the reaction from untreated uh, borderlines who may be in denial. 
or on you know some level of um, you know beginning treatment or you know anyway very early on if not completely untreated altogether you can understand they don't like to feel stigmatized and they don't like to feel like they're bad people so uh, these responses are pretty obvious they're usually very aggressive and very destructive and very abusive you know things you know in the very beginning when I started putting up these videos uh, um, what I'm assuming are untreated borderlines would come on and say why don't you walk in front of a bus and just get it over with and you know you're so pathetic and things like that and so that's just straight out abuse so I would just block them there was just no point in responding the uh, second kind of reaction comes from untreated codependence these are uh, non-borderlines who are or have been but usually are in a relationship with a borderline and they still have hope they still have hope that they are going to be able to fix them and some of them I've, I've talked about here because the responses are really really interesting um, some of them who claim to be you know they take on the title literally I speak out for those who can't speak for themselves and then they'll launch into personal attacks on me about how I am stigmatizing the condition and they are you know in things I already know like the this is a trauma response and these people have been through all kinds of blah 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 and we need to not stigmatize their mental condition which I, I agree with but the reason why they're doing that is because they are also in denial that they are number one addicted to the caretaking and number two they are in denial that their love uh, will not be able to reach the borderline the way that they want and they're in denial that the borderline will never be able to turn around and love them another example is somebody who came on uh, and responded and said uh, well you know something about my experience and saying well you know it didn't work for you because she wasn't really in love with you what you really need to do is make sure that they really love you and that the love is real and you know and then he went on to say how his connection was real and that she really loved him and he just knew how to deal with it and, and all these kinds of things and you know I didn't bother saying it in response to him but my thought was yeah talk to me in a year <laughs> let's see if you still think that way in a year it was really obvious that he didn't understand what borderline personality disorder really was. I didn't either. As I would say about halfway through my uh, romantic relationship, I became aware, uh, painfully aware, that something was really wrong. I started feeling like I was going insane because I couldn't figure out what was happening. You know, going from the being completely loved, you're the most wonderful person, I'm going to love you forever, to literally overnight, I can never talk to you ever again, you're the most dangerous person for me in the world. You're trying to destroy me. Um, you know, those, after two or three of those episodes, you know, where you, I talk to her and talk her back into, no, we're blah, 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 and then we, you know, have this pseudo-emotional uh, healing session where we both become aware of what we're both doing and she seemingly has complete awareness of her psychological issues and then I feel safe again like oh at least now she knows and we'll be okay followed by the next day with another I had a bad dream we can't ever be together um, you know two or three of those and I started losing my sanity and then I became aware of borderline personality disorder and I started researching it and I started to understand oh this is what's going on now I didn't fully understand because uh, one of the things that I do here which I don't see professionals doing the people who have the channels who are you know who are mental health professionals they don't tell you that you won't be able to get them to love you because the very thing that you think they want and the very thing they think they want is the very thing that makes them split on you that your your desire to love them and nurture them and take care of them 
is what will guarantee that they will discard you eventually or that you will be so hurt you will have to walk away. They don't say that. And so they talk about the symptoms of borderline personality disorder. They talk about the, the codependent dynamic, but I never heard any of them say without treatment, it is guaranteed that when you successfully love them, they will split on you because they have a mental illness. It wasn't spelled out to me like that. If it was, then my codependent denial didn't hear it. So I kept going after it. So, uh, so the second response that I see is people like, like I was who are in denial and don't completely understand what uh, borderline personality disorder is, the actual mental illness is. And um, they want to argue with me and say that I'm stigmatizing it because what they want is they want to believe that they can actually heal the borderline with their love and that the borderline will turn around and love them. So that's the second. So we've got the untreated borderline who's angry and in denial. And then we have the codependent who is in denial. Those are the first two reactions. Then the third reaction is the codependent who is at the stage of becoming aware, usually after, actually pretty much always after, after they've been discarded or they have they have left the relationship, um, which is kind of the same. Because the truth is, if you end up leaving a borderline, it's because the borderline has sabotaged the relationship to such a degree where you have no choice but to leave. So it ends up being the same. You're, it's, it's still a discard. You know, one is a passive one where they, you know, my, my ex-wife did this, even though she wasn't borderline. Looking back on it, she had borderline tendencies. But my ex-wife did this where she came to me with a list of demands on what I had to do to meet her needs, and it was literally impossible. There was no human on the planet that could have given her what she was asking, and I had no choice but to say, I can't do it, I have to leave. If those are your demands, I can't meet them. I would like to, but I can't. And so what was really happening is that she had decided that the marriage was over, and she was going to sabotage it to such a degree where I would leave, and then she could say that I left her. And then she could play the victim role and say, he left me and he wasn't willing to cooperate. So however the borderline creates it, they create the sabotage so that you end up either having to leave or they outright um, uh, ghost you or discard you in a horrible way. What ends up after that is you have the codependent who is still, I wouldn't say that they're, that they're in any real recovery but they are painfully aware that their borderline uh, cannot ever be loved by them. And so then they go into the phase and they start to stigmatize the borderline. They start to call, the border, call all borderlines by horrible names and say that they're psychopathic and that they're narcissistic and that they have no empathy and they, you know, and there's partial truths to what they say, but they make the decision that the borderline plans out how they are going to destroy and devalue them. So that's the third response. And then um, the fourth response I've seen, which has been the most surprising to me, I did not see this coming at all, was borderlines who have been in recovery for who knows how long, who uh, like the channel and they like what I say, and then they will share. They will help, they will actually help me by correcting my, uh, either they'll confirm my observations, because what I've been doing is I've been observing and trying to get into the mind of a borderline to, to, so that I can understand it, because that helps me to separate and heal. And I've been right a lot of the times. Again, I'm making conclusions that I don't hear professionals make because maybe they can't because that's not their job. But it helps me to get inside and say, here's what's going on. This is why it happens. And I'm, I don't know from personal experience because I'm not a borderline. I'm trying to intuit and figure it out so that I can understand and heal. And so borderlines who are in recovery will come on and say, that's exactly right. That's exactly what happens. And in fact, here's what's really goes on in the mind. Or they will 
go, no, you're not completely right on this point. Here's what's really going on with us. And it, it will end up being incredibly uh, healing for me and incredibly instructive to see that. And so I've modified some of my understandings, especially about the um, really quick sandy part about do borderlines have empathy? Do borderlines really love you? And so I've modified some of my thoughts about that because of the fourth reaction, which is the borderline who is in recovery and is not in denial and understands that they have a mental illness that um, causes them when they're regressed and they're, they don't have awareness, causes them to uh, damage the other person as well as themselves and the relationship. And they understand that, you know, that, um, you know, they've come to understand that it's an actual mental illness. And so uh, those are the four reactions. I suppose there's a fifth one, which would be mine. And that would be um, the codependent who has achieved the level of recovery and um, doesn't stigmatize the borderline, but at the same time doesn't co-sign their dysfunction. So let me be clear about where I'm at. Uh, I am no longer in a state of codependency in terms of borderlines. Um, I have achieved a state of recovery. I say my, I'm using my words very carefully because it's a state of recovery that has to be maintained. So I maintain it. And as a result, I am bulletproof from borderlines. I know that because I have met and actually dated one. Um, it lasted two or three dates before I became aware. And the, the signs were there in the very beginning. You know, but I'm like, OK, we'll see what happens. I didn't I didn't fully get attached. I, you know, all the some, you know, a lot of the feelings came up, but I was listening to my instincts that were saying, keep your distance. You don't know enough about this person yet. There's a lot of red flags here. So let's keep, you know, and after three or four dates, I came to the realization and saw, I saw the person split. And I said, I know exactly where this is going to go. And because I hadn't invested emotionally into it, um, I was able to go no contact. And, um, you know, I didn't have any, any negative effects whatsoever. So if you are in a state of recovery that you can maintain, you can interact with borderlines and they won't have that magical power to pull you in to their, um, to their dysfunction. So I would say that, was prob that would be probably the fifth. Uh, I have a three-pronged approach which I use, which I strongly recommend. Um, it's what has worked for me, so I can only talk about what has worked for me. And that is number one, therapy. Therapy with a qualified professional who knows how to deal with codependence from cluster B personalities. And it's really important that um, you find a therapist that works for you. I hear a lot, and I've, I've seen it on this channel already, there are people who will badmouth therapy and they'll say something like, all it is is just talk, it doesn't do anything. Um, or they'll complain about the money, um, it costs money and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But that's not a good enough excuse, saying that, you know, you didn't get anything. You went to therapy and didn't get anything. My first reaction is that you're not compliant and you don't want to do the work. You don't want to look at yourself. But it is possible that you might have a therapist that either doesn't know what they're doing or isn't the right therapist for you. So when somebody says, oh, I tried that, it didn't work, I say, so what? Are you going to do that with a car when you go test drive a car and the car doesn't start? Are you just going to say cars don't work? You're going to know that one doesn't work. Let me try another one. If the therapist doesn't work. Go see another one. What are you going to do if you've got some major other physical thing? You got a broken arm and you go to the doctor and he says, I don't know how to fix broken arms. And you're going to say, well, then I went to a doctor. He couldn't fix it. So don't don't give that. Go and give me that crap. That's just that's just a cop out. I strongly recommend getting therapy. Second thing is going to Codependence Anonymous and working the 12 steps. You can do that very easily. Coda.org and you can take a Zoom meeting anywhere in the world. 
Work the fourth step especially, but work all of them. And don't worry about the crazy people that are in there. That's why they're there. They're crazy. Don't get all wrapped up in that. Just work the steps. That's what's going to give you the healing. The fourth step and the tenth step, you have to do them all. But the maintenance steps will keep you in a state of recovery. And then the third one is having a spiritual discipline. Now, I don't care what that is. I don't care if you're an agnostic or an atheist or if you're full-on born-again Christian. I don't care. Whatever you, whatever discipline works for you, whether that be going to church or whether that means uh, breathing, whether that means going and sitting in front of the ocean every day, you know, as long as it is a daily discipline where you spend time focusing on something that gives you a feeling of spiritual connection. And agnostics and atheists can have it too. There's a lot of uh, atheists who are Buddhists, a lot of atheists who meditate. So you can have a, quote, spiritual discipline without having to believe in anything in particular. So those are the three, th the three-pronged approach that has worked for me. If you dive into that and you do that with everything that you have, I can guarantee you that you can be in a state of recovery. And then you will be bulletproof against borderlines, narcissists. I say this because there are people here who they get out of borderline relationships. They even leave borderline relationships just to get back into one you know, a few months later, or they, they end up with a narcissist or a covert narcissist. I mean, I'm, I'm reading um, comments from people who've been in three or four different ones. You know, they just can't seem to avoid them. Well, that's because you're still an untreated codependent. And so you have to understand the causes of why you seek these people out. You're not a victim. You, you're seeking them out. And uh, so I just want to, you know, I'm going to, I kind of like to keep things balanced here on this channel because um, I do also think it's really important to make videos that help the uh, the non-borderline feel that they are that they have some support about how horrific the experience is for them. I just recently did a video, my last one, about um, loving a borderline can make you ill, and I can understand that. Uh, borderlines and or even codependents looking at it can think that I am uh, stigmatizing the borderline. I'm not. I'm stigmatizing the mental illness, but I, I believe that the borderlines themselves are just as much a helpless victim as anybody in their life. In fact, they are the most helpless. Uh, and um, I do not believe, unless they have some other comorbidity going on, I do not believe that, on the whole, that borderlines are planning out anybody's demise. I think that they honestly want love and that each time it's the same for them. Each time they get into a relationship, they think this is going to finally be the one. As same thing that's happening with the codependent. They go, oh, this is going to finally be the one. And it's not. It's the same thing all over again. But I think the borderline wants the same thing that everybody else wants. They want to be loved and they want to give love. Um, they just have this incredibly horrific, toxic mental illness that is horrible for them to live with. And I think that it's really important for um, non-borderlines to understand how horrible it is for them to live with this. It really is. Now, that does not justify any of their behavior. They are still karmically and personally responsible for all of the damage that they cause to themselves and to others. And no matter how challenging it is for them, if they're in uh, therapy, you know, and it is, it's probably going to be extremely challenging and extremely painful to, to live with it and to struggle with how to respond to it. it. Doesn't change anything. So the same is true with the codependent. The codependent is going to have to go through some probably very challenging uh, personal, you know, transformations and take a look at them themselves on a deep level. So, anyway, I thought I wanted to balance things out, but I thought it was interesting to share, I guess, what I'm now calling the five responses, the four response. The first one is the untreated borderline who is abusive and doesn't like to hear anybody talk anything that, that they believe is attacking them personally. For example, one guy came on, seemed like a young guy. He wasn't abusive, but he came on and he really wanted me to change what I was saying. He wanted to tell me what to say. 
and he he w tried to blame me for an episode that he went through. He said, I watched one of your videos and I almost committed suicide. So you have to start saying things differently. And then he tried to get me to somebody else's channel and say, say what this guy is saying. And I responded back to him and I said, I'm sorry that you felt that way, but maybe this isn't the channel for you. Just don't watch my videos. This isn't meant for you. It's meant for non-borderlines to recover. And he came back and you know wanted to double down and he wasn't abusive about it, but he was trying to tell me what to say and how to say it. And I said to him, you can't do that. You can't tell people what to say and how to feel. And he said, well, obviously we're just not going to communicate and you're not understanding me. And so that's the first type, which is the, the borderline who's either early in recovery or in denial. And then the second is the codependent who is in denial, who doesn't want to be told that the borderline can't be fixed and don't, doesn't want to look at their own addiction to the borderline. And then there is the codependent who is, uh, has, is out of the relationship because they can't make it work, but is still angry and is uh, wanting to stigmatize the borderline and calls them all kinds of horrible, call them all kinds of horrible names, when in reality what they're really waiting for is for their borderline to ask for forgiveness so that they can go right back in it because anger means denial. If you are judging the borderline as being evil, psychopathic, blah, 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 it means that you unconsciously want them back. And they'll, either them or another one will grab you and pull you in. And then the fourth is uh, the borderline who is in recovery, who is actually agreeing with me, surprisingly enough, I didn't know that would ever happen, and uh, going deeper to show no, not only that, but this. And then, of course, the fifth response is what I would consider myself to be at, which is um, somebody, uh, a codependent who is uh, in some state of recovery and has awareness for themselves and still has empathy for what the borderline has to go through. So that's it for me. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. I'll talk to you all later.